This is the first time that I'm trying to show a little video and I didn't have any sound with it, so I'll talk over it. What I did this morning was I added into the Google Classroom an Adobe mobile apps entry in Google Classroom. So these slides are in there. Feel free to open them up if you wanna write notes or whatever. And I also added links to all the little videos I'm showing. So if you wanna take a look at them again, most of them are about a minute or so. They're on YouTube unlisted. So the easiest way to get to them is through Google Classroom. This past January, I got invited to a ISTE Digital Leadership Summit. One of the things that we did on that trip was we went to Adobe's headquarters. What they did was they tried to explain Adobe's perspective of how creativity is going to become more and more important to our students and what they're doing. What we're looking at is a photo of Adobe's big conference room. And as they were sharing about how Adobe sees the importance of creativity to students, they also began talking about the fact that they have a whole series of mobile apps that are available for free. And so just like everything else, it took a little bit of playing around for me to figure out exactly how to get everything together. I will be showing you how to get yourself an Adobe dashboard, kind of in the same way if your school uses Google Suite, you have a Google Suite dashboard. With Adobe, you end up with an Adobe dashboard. I think all of your schools already use Google Suite, so that makes it even easier for your students to sign into these Adobe mobile apps once it's set up. In order to get a free Adobe Spark account for the students of all ages, you need an invitation from CDWG, which is a vending company. They invite you into the Adobe Value Incentive Program. It doesn't cost anything. The only reason Adobe have tied into CDWG is if you're a bigger school, like a high school, for example, you might want to get something like Adobe Photoshop for your high school students. And so this way, CDWNG and Adobe both have an easy way for you to get those extra programs. If your school already uses CDWG, all you'll have to do is ask your representative to give you an invitation to the Do Adobe Value Added Program. If you don't already have a contact at CDWG, I have one and I'll give you an email introduction. And it really took less than a week for me to get the whole thing approved. I did it through the Arcan Schools domain. So if you, after you listen to this, want to play around with these tools, you can use that Arcan Schools account and sign in to the Adobe tools so you can play around with it. Just let me know. After you get that invitation from CDWG, just like Google, you have to go to your school's domain and add a text record. Adobe knows that you're part of this school. You can also add your students to the Adobe dashboard by downloading your student IDs from Google, editing it, and then re-uploading it to Adobe. So again, it really took no setup to, to get this together. Can I download from PowerSchool too, or is it just easier on Google? You could definitely download from PowerSchool as well. It was a little confusing, but now that I've done it, I can help anybody through it. In addition, I've also got contacts with the Adobe Education Manager, and he was really good at making sure if I had any trouble that he would get us answers. And so it'll be the same for you. If I can't help you through it, I can easily get that Adobe Account Manager to find us somebody. So the question is, what can these apps do? And they really are an awful lot of fun. You may have already played around with Adobe Spark, so it can make these little graphic-y images that combine photos and words. The nice thing about being with this Adobe program, they can get rid of all the watermarks on things. So if you use Adobe Spark, it comes with the Spark logo on the bottom right corner. When you use it with this value added program, they remove the watermark. So this is also awesome if you have a principal or a teacher who's in charge of your school's social media, it's really, really easy to use the Adobe Spark program to generate quick, easy graphics that you could use in your school's social media. It can make these really interesting patterns. 
And you might say to yourself, well, why would that be helpful? And if you teach your students how to build web pages, sometimes you might want to tile some patterns in the background. You can make these really cool, easy patterns. Also, you can take images, you can take photos of things and just make interesting looking images out of them. Or you can use it as a drawing tool where you can take a photo of an image and draw on top of it. So it's just giving a different level of creativity to your students for different projects. And in addition to Adobe Spark, they have Adobe Pages, which is an easy way to create instant web pages. So if you want your students to be creating easy, simple web pages, Adobe Pages will do that. Those Adobe Pages can also be turned into PDFs, so they can be a nice way to create a very pretty looking PDF. And finally, there's Adobe Video, Just like we saw with ClipChamp and iMovie earlier in the years, Adobe Video allows you to pull in pictures and words and do voiceovers and create little video clips. We're going to switch over to my desktop and I'm going to bring up six different little videos that I created and I'll sort of talk over what they do. The first one's called Adobe Photoshop Mix. And Adobe Photoshop Mix is a single piece of Adobe Photoshop that was taken out and put in a separate app. And what you'll see is once you have the kids having their setup, they'll sign in with just their Google ID. It will take them to the Google sign-on screen and they'll sign in and it brings you into the program. So this Photoshop, what it allows you to do is it allows you to bring in any photo select different looks, and then you can kind of wipe your finger across certain parts of it to add different effects. In this case, they're showing an example of inverting the flowers so that it looks like one of those black and white images with just the flowers highlighted. When you save it, it can go to your Google Drive or to the Adobe Cloud. You can also combine images. So they took that flower pot and then they added a layer of the raindrops, and then they blurred it all together. You can take two images and cut pieces out. So in this case, they had an alligator picture and a donut picture, and they're using this auto tool to auto select the white, and then they'll cut it out and subtract that white from the picture. Once that white's selected, they're gonna resize it, so there's the part where it's showing what are the pixels to get rid of. You'll notice there's a refine feature and they can feather it so that it doesn't look quite so jaggedy and then resize it so that it fits inside the guy's mouth. So that's called Photoshop Mix. These tools are available both on iOS, so it can be on an Apple iPad or on Android. The next one's called Adobe Photoshop Fix. It's very much like the Band-Aid tool that you have in Photoshop. But again, they just pulled out these tiny little pieces. Each time a student signs onto one of these apps, they do have to re-sign into the Google environment. And if you don't have Google, you can just create Adobe accounts as well. So it's not limited to Google customers. And what they're showing in this example is that you can take a photo, and highlight a certain section of it and use the spot tool heel option and it'll just take spots out. It'll replace it with something nearby. Another image they had was this woman who has this very dark look to her photo. And so you can again, use your finger, wipe over a section of it and say to make it brighter or make it darker. The Adobe mobile apps each have these real little discrete reasons for people to use them. The next tool that you might like with your students is Adobe Illustrator Draw. 
So again, they took the nice pieces of Adobe Illustrator and just put some drawing tools together. So if you wish you had a nice drawing tool, it's also in this case drawing with vector forms. So once you make it, you can scale them very easily in another program. And you'll see it gives you a couple of different brush options that you can use, just like any other drawing tool. You can make the paintbrush bigger and smaller. You can choose different colors within it. And then there's an eraser tool as well so that you can erase the images. These are little tutorials that I was playing with in recording. And you'll see that also if you want to teach students about layers, you can use multiple layers, so transparent layers and solid layers. And when you go to save it, because you have these Adobe accounts, you could save them to the Adobe Cloud. You could save them on an iPad to your photo album, or you can save them to the Google, to the Google Drive. You can also bring in images from your camera roll. So in this case, I brought in a picture of a pair of scissors that I took, and then I added another layer. There's different grids that you can use. So if you have an art teacher who wants to explore art in a digital fashion, the grids might be ha helpful for the art teacher. And in this case, I just added a blank transparent drawing layer and chose a paintbrush, chose a color, drew on top of the scissors, and then deleted that original layer. So if you're trying to get students to find photos, let's say that they're working on a PowerPoint presentation and you're trying to help them learn how to choose images that are available um, for use by anybody and they want a pair of scissors and they can't find what they want, well, this is a great way for them to pull in something and make it artistic. And somebody was asking if it can be used with Erasma. And I think it should be usable this way because when you save these images, they become JPEGs. And so JPEGs can be brought into Erasma. So that should work quite well. You see here, I uploaded it right to my Google Drive. And now I can use it anywhere that I'd like. Now, these mobile apps do have to work on a tablet so an iPad or an Android tablet. But then once you put them up in Google Drive or in the Adobe Cloud, you could use them on a Chromebook. The next one is Adobe Photoshop Sketch. And it's going to look very much the same as the previous one. The difference is the Adobe Sketch just makes a basic flat image. So this one wouldn't scale as well as the draw version would. So this is just going to go through the tools again. And so you can see this has some different, more paintbrushy kind of looks. But I think that this would be really easy for any child to use in any grade. And once you have that Adobe dashboard set up with the students, kids under 13 can use it. So it gives you some nice drawing tools to use. You don't have any built-in graphics. So for the littlest kids, if they like to use built-in images, this wouldn't be good for that. But just straight drawing tools, this would be a great tool for drawing. And you can see that you can also change the transparency on these tools. And if you think about it, it just gives you a nice sketchboard too. So if you're in the science classroom and you're trying to have the kids draw some images of plants or animals, or if you're in math class and you want the kids to do some work showing just images like on a drawing board, you could just use the pen or the pencil to do math and show the, the images that way. And again, they could be saved and uploaded over to Google Drive. The next one really caught my eye. It's called Adobe Capture. And Adobe Capture just has some interesting opportunities for the art classroom 
and for the computer technology lab. And I know that we have some classroom teachers here. So perhaps as you're looking at this, you can see some different features that might support your student learning. So Adobe Photo Capture, again, I'm signing in as a student. It asks for access to your camera because what it does is it takes images and transforms them. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing it to use my camera right now. And I'm gonna pause for a second. One of the options that it has is called looks. So I've turned on the camera. I had this little book on my desk and I'm looking at the book through the camera. What Adobe's doing is it's pulling out all the different colors that are in this section of the drawing. And as I move it around, or as I choose other things in the room, it's going to take those colors, and you can see them at the top of the screen there, and then you can bring in photos, and you can apply those colors from the book to the images that you're looking at. So it just gives a different way to give different looks. There's also a color feature, so that's my desktop that you're looking at. And you see is it moves the camera around as you're moving the iPad from the desk to the book. It's instantly picking up the colors on the left hand side. And with the looks one, it's just pulling several different colors. And this could be handy if you're doing web page designs or something else because you'll notice you can click on any one of these colors and it will give you the hex code for that exact color. It also shows the RGB codes for those colors. So that piece might be a little technical for a computer class. And then if I don't like this particular batch of colors, I can go back and I can drag across the image and choose exactly specific colors within the image. And then you can publish those colors to your Adobe Cloud. The patterns is just fascinating. So if you look in the middle of the screen here, you'll see again, I'm, I'm just focusing the iPad on a book on my desk. And as I move the book around, it's turning those colors into this pattern. When I hit the photo button, when I take the photo, it then allows me to tilt the picture. And again, as I'm tilting the picture, it's generating different patterns. So if there was some project that you were looking to do patterns, this is my desktop. And so again, I'm just looking at the desktop through the camera. I can tap it and freeze that image. And then I can apply different color looks to the pattern that it generates. So it's, it's fascinating if you're talking about um, computer intelligence and how it can generate pictures. This could be an interesting tool to talk about that as well. Another thing that this Adobe Capture app can do, oh, and I'm just playing a little bit more here with the patterns, is since you have Adobe Creative Cloud, everything that you're doing as you're hitting save goes into the screenshots folder. And so there's my library of screenshots and you can see the color theme that I found. You can look at the patterns that you generate. Once you have those patterns, you can export it to Google Drive or you can export it to your camera roll. And then from there, you could use it in any other project that you're doing. The shapes, again, I just, I found this interesting. I put a pair of scissors on my desktop and you slide on the right to the shapes option and you just align that shape into your screen. And once you have it aligned properly, you can hit the photo button and it will allow you to smooth this image, to crop it, to focus in and out on it. And then once you have the effect that you want, you can even draw on top of it. So I didn't like how that right scissor blade looked. And so I tried to use the paintbrush tool to change the way 
that it would have a sharper edge. I didn't end up liking it so much. It reminds me of those old fashioned woodcut images. And if you have a student who is doing a presentation mm -hmm. on a subject area, they could take photos of images around your room, physical objects, and use them in their presentation. So if you're doing a religion class and the kids are doing some kind of presentation on the nativity and you have nativity scenes around the school, they could use the Adobe Capture option, capture those images, and then save them as JPEGs. And here we are in the Adobe Cloud again. I can bring up the image and then export it to my photo roll or my Google Drive. And once it's in your Google Drive, or not your Google Drive, in your cloud, you can go into a program like Adobe Photo Sketch, start a new sketch, and then you can use the tools that you've created. So one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to create my own brush. So I clicked on an existing brush and I said, I want to add a new brush to my library. Photo, uh, Adobe Capture can also turn any image into a brush. So again, I started with my scissors. And if you look at it on the right, on the left hand side, it's showing you what these, this picture would look like as a paint image. And again, it just gives the kids an opportunity to explore. One of the things that we want to do is, is help the kids with their creativity. So this might be an interesting tool for an art teacher. It could be interesting in math, talking about patterns in the younger grades. And what you can see is that picture now becomes a paintable item. And all of these things can be further stylized. Adobe Comp CC allows you to compose pages very quickly. So I'm making an edited item. And what it does is it shows you what image you'd have to draw on the screen to make your page come to life. So what I did was I started by drawing a box with three lines on it. And the help feature shows what kind of gestures you use to get different things, like a circular image, a rectangular image, a paragraph. So I'm gonna start with a paragraph. I draw a box in three lines, and when I lift my finger up, it knows that's where I wanna put words. I draw a circle with an X on it, it lets me know that's where I want to put a rounded image. And then what I did was I clicked on that image and I want to grab something from my camera roll. And so I choose this applesauce picture that I created. And you'll see it was a rectangular picture and it rounded it off. And then I can click into the area where I put a pasted, um, where I put a text box and I can type whatever text that I want, and then that can be exported as a PDF. So it's a really quick way to do some quick desktop publishing. And what somebody was just clarifying is, can I reach out to CDWG, get an invite, and then use Apple Manager or Zulu and push 230 iPads for use all for free? And the answer is yes. So, the apps are free, the accounts are free, it's just a matter of getting that invitation from CDWG, putting the apps on your iPad, and in advance loading all the student data so that they have sign-ins, and then once they open up that iPad, they can tap on the iPad app, sign in with their credentials, and use all those apps for free. So I was really, really, really excited about this. I just thought it was an, a really a best kept secret. Once you have these IDs for the kids on Chromebooks or laptops or desktops, they can go to spark.adobe.com and create those Spark posts in premium mode. 
when I did a workshop with you earlier in the year, I used the image on the right, but the item on the left I created with my same account, which was upgraded to the Spark Post Premium now, and you'll see that there's no watermark from Adobe Spark. And when you open up this on Google Classroom, you can click on the link and see the picture up close and personal. The Spark page is the ability to create a web page pretty quickly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there. This is the actual web page, rather. So once you create a Spark page, they give you and they give the students a web URL that goes directly to the page they created. So if your kids created a Spark page, they could then turn in this link into a Google Classroom or Edmodo or wherever you keep your, your work. And so it's just going to give you a template that you can pull in pictures. They did say that the pictures that are in Spark and Pages and um, Spark videos, as long as you're going through this VIP account, they are edited so that they're appropriate for kids under 13. They do have to sign on with their, their school ID though. And so this is the first page and then I can drag down and that's the second page that I created and then drag down and it shows who created it and credits for images that I got online. And then the final piece are those Spark videos. And so what you'll see here is they have an education gallery, and this is an example. The Invention of Hugo Cabre by Brian Selznick. A story about a boy named Hugo. Hugo and his father made invention, but something really bad happened. And now Hugo has to live alone. Hugo took a certain invention back with him. Hugo now has to live alone in the clocks at a train station in Paris. Hugo meets a girl named Isabel. Now it's a whole adventure for Hugo and Isabel. Hugo and Isabel unlock secrets and changes everything for Isabel and Hugo. I would read The Invention of Hugo Cabaret because it's full of adventure, mystery, and wonder. What this class did was they created a video pulling together images and pictures and then the child told the story of the invention of Hugo um, through words. So this is a really nice opportunity for kids, instead of doing your standard book report the same way over and over and over again, they have to write a script for themselves, pull pictures together, and then turn it into a video. Once you create your desktop, they'll go to spark.adobe.com, and they'll see this page on the right-hand side of the screen. Instead of saying continue with Google, which would feel like what you're supposed to do, you click here, I wanna log on with a school account. And once you log in with a school account, that's where you put your regular Google Drive username, your regular Google Drive password, and then they get right into Spark as if they had signed on in any other way. How does your school get started? Like I said, you have to begin with an invitation from CDWG. And so this is the invitation letter that I had gotten from them. Once they send you this email, you click join now and it takes you into Adobe's console. You do have to then agree to their their little online you know continue membership agreement which says that you're a school once you set that up it does ask you to to add to your web page a little text item that says that you know this is adobe's going to be signing on also on the google side i had to add something in the google admin but again, the directions were really straightforward and easy to work with. So I'm going to turn this over to you all for um, questions that you might have, ideas that you might have. And like I said, a lot of it to me looks a little bit like it'd be great for a technology class or an art class. But I think that, um, you know, Anna, 
I know that life is so busy in the math classroom, but I don't know if you ever have them doing anything where it would help them to generate their own drawings, but maybe explaining a math concept in a Spark video as opposed to another type of assessment might be interesting. No, I was actually thinking of um, in seventh grade, we do tessellations. So, you know, instead of the kids actually doing it by hand or they can do it by hand, but right. then they could actually do it on the computer as well using the Adobe, which I think is kind of cool too. I don't know. That just really connects with me. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they have to determine whether the polygons can create tessellations, and once they figure out one of them, then they can go with it. So, yeah, so that's definitely a an idea for, for the math class. And like I said, yeah. you're not looking to use it in every single situation, but no. if once a year, no. it gives you a different way. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Oh, thank you for sharing that because, you know, it's always when I talk to you all that I help seeing different ways of using things. And Carl is asking, so after we download the app, we have to create each student sign in password or if they have their school emails, they can just use that with their corresponding passwords that they use for their Google account. Right, so Carla, definitely, you don't have to, um, what I did when I did this, I wanted to create an account for all the tech integration specialists, and I'll send you the username and password when I send you your, um, your certificate for this webinar but I didn't have to create them all by hand and the students, you guys, my tech integrators, don't have to create it. I just downloaded from the Google admin panel all, all of the accounts, all the usernames and um, past, well, actually just all the usernames because as I just added your first name, your last name and your Arcan Schools ID, once Adobe has that, that's all that it needs to make the connection to um, Google Suite. So it, it's pretty fast, Carla. When I send you your certificate, if you're interested in giving this a try, let me know. If you think you have a CDWG ref, because a lot of people use them since the state technology fees are tied into CDWG as a vendor, a lot of our schools use CDWG. So you would just have to ask your CDWG mm -hmm. rep to give you an invitation to the Adobe Value Incentive Plan. And the words are on the screen on my slide right there. But if you don't have a CDWG rep, let me know. I'll get you the contact information of the person that I worked with. And she was quick. It was within... Within a couple of days, I had that, and I would say it took me maybe an hour, an hour and a half to figure out the rest of the steps. They give you all the steps, but it took me a little bit of thinking. As I did the whole process, I screen captured, so I can just send you those screen captures, and we can talk through it if you need some help, but it really, it wasn't hard at all. Great, thanks, Michelle. And you know, my offer is always standing. If you need any help, let me know. I'm happy to play with you one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. I'm happy to come up to the school. So whatever I can do, but I just, I thought this was the best kept secret of free tools that Adobe has. So I was hmm. really, I felt so lucky that I was out there in California and that they introduced it. And it gave us the ability to meet the people who work one-on-one -on -one with the schools, so that made the rest of the process really easy.